Hello again, and welcome to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. I'm your host, certified sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again, and blogger at Psychology Today and WebMD. And I have with me Dr. Adam Matthews, my co-host, who's a couples therapist, psychotherapist, and president of NCAMFT. Foreplay is dedicated to helping couples keep it hot. Thanks for listening. Now on to today's topic. Hey, Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy, we are sponsored today by Crated with Love. It's a date night subscription box that helps couples strengthen their relationship with monthly games, activities, and challenges, and it's delivered right to your door. And we see so many couples who need ideas for date nights, right? So this is a perfect resource for them. Yeah, and I love the little box it comes in. It's very creative. I love it. And it's Mother's Day. I know. Right? Already? I know. This Are is your... what you can get your wife I for could. Mother's Day. I could get my wife this for Mother's Day. <laughs> Might uh, be more of a gift for both of you. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's for both of us. But are your boys going to do anything special for you? Do they Do they get into Mother's Day? Do they treat you well for Mother's Day? Um, they are learning to do that still. Oh, dudes, <laughs> get on it. What is that? They're not, I mean, do they not good dinners, good they, gifts? Well, what is happening? They, we're actually going to my favorite cafe, and but that was my own reservation. <laughs> <laughs> they paid it for you. They at least get you the card, right? They, they at get least me the get card. You the card. Yeah. Now, see, they're adults. They should be able to do that. And with my kids my age, I have to go out and buy the gifts from Absolutely. the kids for them. You're but, training them. Yeah, but now they are starting to they're starting to want to have opinions about the gifts and costing me even more money because <laughs> they want to pick out the diamond earrings and necklaces. Oh, cool. um, I love so, your kids. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're they're big spenders of my money. Right. <laughs> Adam, it's Mother's Day. Come on. Uh, all right. Your yeah. generous she, heart. She de- she deserves all of it. All the money. You know what? So I was interviewed this week by Time magazine and One of the things that they were talking about was this study, speaking of mothers and fathers and the ways families are set up. Mm -hmm. Basically, there was this study that was done about families, and the outcome was that traditional family structures, Mm -hmm. um, where the man does the manly things and the woman does the feminine things, apparently, Mm -hmm. you know, that that, they have more sexual frequency. So, wait, let me make sure I understand this. So, you're talking about... Like traditional roles as like fifties, yes, old school Donna Reed, yeah. like Leave It to Beaver, yeah, and it was, um, you know, the the study was published like in two thousand and thirteen, mm. and the interviewer was saying, you know, is this true? Do you find this in your couples that the more traditional relationship actually has more sexual frequency? So you mean the the Beaver's parents were getting it on a lot? <laughs> is that, is yeah, that what you're that's saying? what they were saying. Why why does that happen? Why is that? Why is that attractive? What does that make? Well, I mean, more the, the fear is right. Like, I mean, I actually think my husband doing the dishes is incredibly sexy. You know, <laughs> yeah. yay that! But the fear, I think, as we read that and thought about it, was okay. Does this mean that there really is some sort of sexual piece about gender roles that turns people on more? And it turns out that the data needed to be reanalyzed. Uh, oh, it was. It, so was, it was based. Not true. No, it was based on old data. And this was before dual careers, basically. And so with dual careers, we have found that, in fact, divided responsibilities increases attraction. And when couples share childcare as well, that increases sexual satisfaction. So it's actually the sharing of the load. And I mean, that makes sense to me because what's fair and when we feel like our partner is fair to us, I mean, that makes us you know, feel better about the relationship. And when there's good feelings, you know, we want to be more sexual. Yeah. But that that seems to be a thing that gets couples out of whack, though, a lot of times is that they do not think it's fair. Like yeah. that, the division, uh, they yeah. like how many couples do you hear that says, I do way more of the household chores than my partner does. Yeah. Right. I mean, that that to me, that is just one thing that I hear so often is just this inequity in the relationship that if if one person is complaining that they do more of the household chores, the other one is complaining that they work harder or mm-hmm. that their job requires more hours. Like there is, um, they make more of a financial commitment. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and the, and there doesn't seem to be, and they're also thinking that they do contribute, mm-hmm. right? right? The person that think that says that they're bringing more of a financial contribution still says, I still help out around the house, right? Yeah, and, I, I used to have it on my forms. On my forms, people had to write out the division of household labor. Because I think it is such a point of contention. I've often said that resentment is the monster under the bed. I mean, mm. if, if you feel resentful with your partner, I mean, it, it really kills sexual desire. Yeah. 
and it's it's hard to reconcile that, right? Because you, it's hard for you to see. I think we all are the heroes of our own story, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And so Absolutely. we we all like try to figure out, like, believe that we are doing the best that we possibly can, and we couldn't do one thing more. And if you don't recognize all the effort that I'm making, then like you obviously don't care about me, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that that is. That, that dynamic gets so ingrained in us because it's so hard to take the other person's point of view that I just think, man, that effort, I, my wife should notice. I did the dishes last night. Why is she not just jumping my bones after I, after I did I the dishes? It. That is so I confusing. Or I, took out, or I took out the trash or like I did something <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> my wife going, why do, you, why do you need recognition for uh-huh. just making sure our house is free of garbage? I will say that, you know, this is a game my husband and I have done pretty well on. Oh, yeah. Like when we clean the toilet, we bring the other person over and say, look, look, <laughs> it's clean. <laughs> The other one who was like, oh, that's so awesome. So you, you know, stage- Did you see the lawn that I mowed? I'm like, that is so awesome. So you stage a party every time you do a chore. That's because that's some yeah. good motivation. I, I will, You know, people get so hung up on this, and it is such a power struggle. They want to say, you know, well, what you're doing is not as important, or you're not doing it fast enough, or you're not doing enough. Or, or the right way. You're not doing the it right the right way. way. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it, it is just really another area that people struggle in. I, I think about this in three pots. So there's the financial commitment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and bringing in the money. There's also the childcare, mm-hmm. which is enormous. And then there's household management. And all three of those areas take a huge effort. Yeah. Uh, and people have different standards, too, you know, about what's acceptable and everything from what's acceptable to our economy to what's acceptable in terms of the dust bunnies under the table, you know. Mm. Yeah. And then and doling that out becomes like how you manage that. That becomes the fight, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you want it to be at a certain standard. Right, and if the other person is not living up to what you see as the standard, mm-hmm. right, all of a sudden it's it's inequitable and it's and it's and it's not fair, right? And that comes out in, in people's sex life as well, right? It really does, yeah. yeah. Because I mean, I think that this resentment builds up, and then mm. they're supposed to somehow or another come together, lay that all aside, and be hot in bed, and they're thinking, you know, I just had a fight with you about you know you yelling at me about the work I did do or didn't mm. do. I mean, it's really stressful. Yeah. Well, and and I think sex is such a is supposed to be something that's equitable, mm-hmm. in in concept, mm-hmm. right? It's something that's supposed to be um, mutual, something that's supposed to be shared. And so, if you, if I don't feel like my partner is being mutual in these other areas, how am I going to feel like they're being mutual in the bedroom? Right, and I think some people get really hung up about mutuality. It's okay, you have to initiate as often as I do. Oh, right? yeah. You don't initiate as often as I do. It should be fifty fifty. Mm. I'm like, ooh, that's a formula for very little sex. This is this is something that we call in couples therapy. We call it the tit for tat or uh-huh. quid or quid pro quo. Like, <laughs> I'm glad you straightened that out. Yes, why, you know, you know, like tit, tit for tat. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, okay, all right. That's a, that's, a, that's a side. <laughs> let's go with quid pro quo uh, okay. to help the innuendo there. Um, but the quid pro quo just means it's it's we're keeping everything on a square right. uh, something scale. Something for something. Yeah, I do something, you do something, and I'm keeping track of that. Also, you could think about it in terms of scorekeeping. Yeah, right. We're keeping. We're we're keeping track of how much I did versus how much you did, and if if I am winning, right, I've done more than you, but I can I'm but always somehow winning. another winning means losing. Yeah, there's always yeah. You know, if I'm ahead, I'm actually behind. You know, I I think that we have to do things out of our heart, and we have to believe our partner is doing the very best they can. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are sometimes inequities I, yeah. that have to be addressed. You know, I, I have certainly had patients who come home, stay home, do nothing, yeah. and it has to be addressed. But overall, with good people, you know, they're both doing the best they can. They may have different energy levels. Yeah. They may feel differently about how much energy needs to go into which bucket. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I love about this whole conversation is if, if people don't address this, right, if they continue in a – scorecard who's winning who's losing type of mentality Mm -hmm. like they are this is going to escalate and they're going to end up in some major fights that have a really simple solution right and they and they're going to feel like their marriage is falling apart i have so many couples who's they they come in and they are questioning the the stability of their relationship and when we get right down to it like this is what they're doing Right. Yeah. They, it is. They're arguing. They're in a quid pro quo scorekeeping type of relationship over something that sometimes is as simple as the, the chores in the household. Exactly. I mean, if they were living alone or when their partner travels, somehow or another, it all gets done. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. The children get fed. You know, the laundry's done. But somehow or another, it's the race of, you know, OK, I did a little bit more than you did. Mm. And 
there's these creeping feelings of resentment. I mean, gosh, you know, being committed is hard. Oh, sure. There's there's a lot at stake. And you would think that there's two people, you know, plowing through all this work together. But instead, it's like they're fighting each other and trying to figure it out, mm. you know, who who's doing more. Yeah. So – we got practical tips. Yeah, we got right. some tips. All right, so we're we're to gonna come back. It. We're gonna come back after the break. We're gonna have, we're gonna be solving things left and right, man. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's gonna keep be great. Keep those buckets empty <laughs> keep or those, full. Yeah, that's right. We'll be back after a bit. Thank you so much to all our Patreon supporters. Right? Yeah, Patreon is a platform where you can directly support things that you love. We really want to expand the resources that we can be able to provide right. to you as our listeners. If you know our work touches you and our work helps you, we would be so grateful for your support. Just go to our website, foreplayrst.com, and there you can find a way to support us, and you can see our episodes and our blogs. And thank you so much, guys. Speaking with certified sex therapist Lori Watson from Awakening Center for Couples and Intimacy. Lori, what is an intensive? So an intensive is 12 to 14 hours of therapy all in one weekend. And it's a way to really make fast progress compared to weekly therapy. I mean, there's just so much more you can get done when you have a chunk of time. Overcome the challenges in your relationship and your sex life. Learn more about intensives and Awakening Center's other services at awakenloveandsex.com. At Matthews Counseling, we believe it is our job to come alongside you in whatever difficult challenges of life you are in and help you rediscover hope and to find the strength that you have to face those challenges. We strive to create a safe and comfortable place for you to explore who you want to be and identify the obstacles standing in your way. Oftentimes, the first step toward finding help is the hardest, but it can also be the bravest. Give us a call at 919-587-8018. Find us online at Matthews Counseling. Net. We look forward to working with you. Hey, we're back with Four Play Radio Sex Therapy, and you may have noticed we have some cool new tunes. Some new music, yes. Yes. The jam too. And we have a cool new producer named Lauren, who uh, is really helping us. She's listen, man, we're, getting we're, us in line. we're official, we're polished. As George Jefferson said, we're moving on up, man. Yeah, we are. Absolutely. All right. Okay, so we're back to some practical tips on how to keep this thing balanced. Yeah. What you got? What's your practical tip well, that you, you know, offer people? I think that the first thing is how do you decide on what's acceptable? Mm. Uh, because some couples say, you know, it's only acceptable if we each bring in the same amount of money or it's only acceptable if we each spend the same amount of minutes in terms of our work. I, I know a young couple recently who I thought really did it well. Mm -hmm. uh, she said to him, you know, so what do you hate doing? And he said, I hate to grocery shop. And she said, great, I love to grocery shop. It takes me an hour and a half. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And he's like, uh, gosh, I guess I'll be doing the bathrooms and the vacuuming, you mm -hmm. know, and the floors in that yeah. hour and a half, which is about what it took. And, she, and then the other thing that they decided on was both of them made the meals. They both planned the meals. And they both did the meal cleanup together afterwards. Yeah. See, so I'll, I'm like, that is super smart. Yeah. What I love about that is they had a conversation about it. Yeah. I, I've run into a lot of couples who just do not have a conversation about it. And it's, it's a simple conversation. How are we going to divide the chores? What are you going to do? What am I going to do? What are we going to do together? Yeah. Right. And I, I think those things become such a it, – it's a, it's a simple solution, but it can get you really big gains as far as this issue goes. Right, right. I also think, you know, sometimes there's a discussion about money. You know, what kind of lifestyle do we want? Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to decide early on. Or maybe, you know, maybe there's a job loss or something and they need to decide later. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, what are we going to do? What's important to us? Is time more important to us than money? How do we decide yeah. how we contribute? I think, um, a, I think a really helpful, when it comes to money in the, that division, like a really helpful conversation point is what's the amount that it's okay that I spend without consulting you? Oh yeah, that's a good. I one think too. that's just that is just a basic one. What do we say is okay? Is it two hundred? Is it a hundred dollars? Is it two hundred dollars? Is it more than that? Where mm -hmm. I don't have to, I can spend it um, without having to talk to you about it mm -hmm. um, because then that just clears up a, a whole bunch of stuff. And um, I think on the forward. flip side, Adam is couples need to decide together how much they're going to save 
Mm. Because sometimes one person's a real saver and they put away a ton of money. And the other person is like, you know, I'd rather feather the nest a little bit more. See? I'd rather, I mean, that's the spend issue. The that's spend the spend issue. Save. See, in my, in my household, I'm the spender. I'm, you're I'm, the spender? I'm the, I'm the impulse buyer, man. Oh, you're the coffee man. I'm the, I, <laughs> I spend, I did not <laughs> How buy much money do you spend today. a month on coffee? Uh, I, something, I mean, some things are really private, Lori, and are things <laughs> that should not be shared with the general public or my wife. Um, so let's just say I like Enough. it. <laughs> I like, coffee I like is it. Adam's love language, I I've like decided. It. I like it a lot. Yep. Um, it is. It's totally my love language. I get but you. I think when couples decide those things, it's just a conversation. But then you also have to stick to it. I have a lot of couples that this is becomes a, an issue as well. Over time, they stop doing what they said they were going to do. I know it. Um, and so they may have to revisit that conversation. But ultimately, if I say that I'm going to be in charge of cl- keeping the bathrooms clean, I have to keep the bathrooms clean. right? And I have oh, to give yeah. my, my partner permission to call me out on that if I'm failing to do that. So basically, we want to use the language of making a promise First of all, having a request. Okay, what what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. Then the other person makes a promise. And then if the agreement is not kept, that's when the call out comes. I think yeah. a lot of couples just assume these things and they're always mad at each other. And it's like, well, I never agreed to that. I don't really care if we vacuum every day or not. That's right. Because it has to be explicit. If it's yeah. not explicit, if I'm just assuming that if I if I do the grocery shopping that you're going to do the bathrooms, yeah. we're in for a world of hurt. Yeah. Right? I, I think there's a problem when your partner becomes a little OCD. Like, I mean, I heard this one couple argue about it. And I finally broke it down. I'm like, well, okay, you, you talk a lot about washing the floor. How often do you wash the floor? And the woman said, every day. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And she's like, well, you know, we've got toddlers and there's dog hair on the floor. See, that leads into another pra- practical <laughs> like, practical tip for me. Like in life, like especially under stressful situations when yeah. there's lots of things happening, but you have to decide on what your standard is. And a mm-hmm. lot of times we have to lower our standards for what is going to mm-hmm. be. I think sometimes we shoot for perfectionism in a lot of these areas of our life. We want the house to always be clean. Yeah, clean um, enough to be happy, dirty enough. No, wait, wait. Clean enough to be healthy, <laughs> dirty enough to be happy. Right. Something like that. Yeah. I've never heard that before. Yeah. That's that a good one. my mother's motto. Oh, it's your mother's motto. <laughs> but let's see? not go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we don't, see, you don't want to, I don't want to talk about my coffee addiction. <laughs> you don't want to talk about your mother. Yeah. I, I understand. It might have been a little dirtier than that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm um, into clean. I got you. Okay. <laughs> but not so organized. But I think, I mean, I think that that's, I have people all the time that like that, that won't have this standard, especially when they're raising small kids or when their jobs yeah. are stressful or when they're going through really, um, um, grief and loss, uh, um, or I there's know. there's things that are happening like that, and they're trying to hold to these standards um, that are just a break. they don't give themselves a break, right? right. That's a lot of it's a lot about grace and mercy to yourself, right? In those in mm-hmm. those times, and I do find a lot of couples who just have some difficulty organizing. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't know they don't know how to do that. I do recommend FlyLady.com just for the record. It's a great little option. She sends you a thousand emails, so put it into a different folder. But it is an organization tool that is free mm-hmm. and, and really helpful, yeah. especially to those of us who are not quite as organized. Yeah. I mean, some people, unlike some people, just that doesn't bother them. Like not being organized, it does not bother them. But you have to be able to talk about that and decide what is your standard for the two of you going to be, not mm-hmm. just trying to follow one person or the other person's standard. So I think one helpful tip is to make the list. I mean, I often find that couples, one person is more visually oriented. Uh, my husband, he needs a list. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I've asked often in the past is just give me time. Give me two hours and let me kind of direct that time. I'll, I'll give you the priorities because oftentimes, you know, he has another set of priorities. But there were seasons in our life that I was the one kind of directing the household management. Mm-hmm. So I knew what was coming, you know, what was crucial to get done. So just asking for a gift of time and say, okay, give me two hours on Saturday and then the rest of the day is yours or whatever. Sometimes that helps if Mm -hmm. you can agree one person is more of the household manager. Yeah. I also like list and I like knowing exactly what I'm doing. So my wife oftentimes will send me in an email all the things that – She'll send me the honeydew basically yeah. in, a, in an email. Yeah, I like that. Um, and that just gives me some – I am visual, so I want to see 
what I'm supposed to do and know exactly what the expectation is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some couples I hear, well, he or she should just automatically know what to do. And a lot of times that just doesn't, it's not, it doesn't help. It's not, it gets lost in the shuffle or some people set uh, reminders on their phone, set alarms on their phone and put it up on the fridge, anything like that, that puts it in front of your face about what we're trying to do together and what's, what's the win for us as far as household management goes. Yeah. So Lori, how does, if we figure this out and we are more equitable in our chores, our household responsibilities, how does that affect our sex life? What, what does that give to us? Okay, so the good thing is, is resentment in the relationship goes down. I mean, most people should be able to work this out, right? Mm-hmm. This is the practical stuff of living a life. Mm. Uh, and just getting it nailed down, really important to reduce resentment and frustration in an ordinary life. Mm. With that said, I think that, you know, resentment uh, being low, often there is another piece that we need to work out in terms of equity in the bedroom, especially around initiation. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that this is almost looked at as a task. You know, men frequently are more of the initiators, but sometimes the the females as well. But if it's overbalanced one way or another, it's like, okay, my job is to start the sexual thing rolling. And what's lost is my sense of being desired. Mm -hmm. And that can be problematic too. It's another way. So I think that hormonally we really have to take into consideration that men – have more testosterone. They're just prompted more internally to have sex. I I think we share testosterone with initiation. I mean, I I really think that I know it's not completely fair, but it's also not completely fair to live in a woman's body that takes so darn long to get going. You know, so think of it that way. There is equity. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think one way of sharing um, this can be both couples take responsibility for sort of you know, last week you planned the date night and this week I'm going to plan it. That's sharing in terms of keeping the relationship going, the things that we need to put in together to keep us going and keep the relationship, you know, management going is important and can be more easily shared than maybe the sexual initiation. I also think, you know, we we got to have grace for each other, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of maybe your partner is overtired and they can't you know, mow the lawn that day or they're overtired and it's really your turn to put the kids to bed or they need you to do that or something. I mean, I think we really have to accommodate each other. I, George Eliot says, right, you know, what do we live for except to make each other's life easier? Mm-hmm. And I like that. It's a spirit of generosity and of giving. And I think that that love comes through. Yeah. You know, we, we respond to that sexually, right? Somebody yeah, who do. wants to give to us. Yeah. I think that's great. Those solutions are often the simplest, but they're often the most overlooked as well. Yeah. Uh, and so in doing that, I think you bring that back into your relationship. Yeah. So thanks for listening. This is Foreplay play Radio Sex Therapy with your co-hosts, sex therapist Lori Watson and couples therapist Dr. Adam Matthews. Until next time. You can now call in your questions to the Foreplay play question voicemail. Dial 833-MY-4PLAY. That's 833, the number 4, PLAY. And we'll use the questions for our mailbag episodes. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much. All content is for entertainment purposes only and should not be considered as a substitute for therapy by a licensed clinician or as medical advice from a doctor.